All right, so I bought this mower, zero turn, it's a Toro, and uh, it's got an oil leak in it. So I found a Cub Cadet mower with the same Kohler engine, and I'm gonna swap it out quick. All right, so here's what we're working with here. There's the motor, it's a Kohler 21 597. There's the oil leak. I have no idea where it's coming from. That's from, I parked this here last night. So, I mean, it's, it's decent, decent leak. Here's the replacement motor. Kohler 19, interestingly enough, 19 horsepower, 597 cc. 597 cc. So, there you go. Should be the same motor. little pro tip for you here for mowers and stuff that you take the battery out or disconnect for the winter throw a wing nut on there man it makes it so much easier to disconnect it versus getting some wrenches in there and trying to mess with it you know it's not like you gotta if it comes loose you just reach down and tighten it back up so yeah then you just drop it right down there it's good to go all right, so there's kind of a goofy on these the terminals for these starters. There's like a post with a nut, and you put it on there, and there's like another nut. And of course, when you want to loosen it, it wants to loosen the whole thing, so you got to throw something on there, and it never fits. And so that's what we're doing, just a vice grip. Well, that ground, ground is loose on the motor there. Okay, well, that's good to figure that out. Uh, hopefully, that's not too bad. Yeah, throw that off there. There. Put that nut back on the post there. And here is where you retrieve the wing nut. There you go. All right, next we're gonna take the, disconnect the fuel. It's just right here. Like that. I think I had a, stopper here just to use just a nut it has gravity it shouldn't even yeah. I shouldn't even have to mess with it just have to watch that probably fuel is going to come out of that later okay that's easy enough put that back and now just on the throttle here, it's just one cable, so it works. I mean, there's your throttle, and you push it all the way forward, and then there, boom, there's your choke. So it's kind of nice, you don't have to mess with anything, you just gotta disconnect that, pull it from there, and you're good to go. Oh, that's a 5 16th. One thing that I probably should have done before working on this is just clean it. I don't know. Simple Green, I'm a big fan of Simple Green. Just spray it with Simple Green most of the time. And uh, spray it with Simple Green and hose it down. It seems like it that works better than almost anything else I've seen. And it's not as bad as like engine degreaser. You get that engine degreaser and it's like, it takes the stickers off and it just is, you can just, yeah, it's just nasty stuff. So uh, big fan of Simple Green. I use that a lot. So, okay, so that's done, that's done. Um, that there for next time. Bleeding pretty good there, but. So here's the connector. It's just one, one electrical connector. That's easy enough. Next is, um, I think the muffler bolts to the frame and then there's four bolts holding the engine on and then the, the bolt holding the, the clutch and the, the pulley on so we'll get uh we'll get down there and take those off that's the bolt that goes into the shaft of the motor that's got to come off and then this little bracket here that's what holds the clutch in place so there's two half inch bolts holding that and that's a five eighths
Okay. That's off. So that's what holds the the clutch in place. You can see it moves now. The whole thing moves. It's not supposed to do that. There's also a electrical connector on there. It's just a clip. That's what engages and disengages the whatever you want to call it. Clutch, PTO. Yeah, there's just a clip up in there. I'm not going to show it to you. It's You can't see it anyway. It's disgusting. It's just full of crap. Yeah, it's just a little clip. I need a screwdriver to get it off. There we go. And clip. All right. Hold on. So that's out of there. In theory, that's the only thing holding this on. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to mess with like the belts, trying to get the belts off and then doing this and whatever else. I'm probably just going to try to lift that motor right out of there and then keep the belts on there and then slide it back on when the new motor goes in. But I am going to get a bar underneath there to make sure that that PTO is coming off. Let's slide down for us. Yep, sweet. Easy. Alright. Hold on. Look at this dog. What a lazy bum. What a bum. Alright, that came off easy so that should just slide off now now the only thing i've left to do is the motor mounts actually the exhaust i'm gonna take the exhaust off so there's another bolt for the exhaust basically right here that needs to come off and i think that's uh I think that's also a 7 16 all right so i'm having some issues getting the bolt off under the bottom that holds the exhaust on because what it is is basically there's a rubber isolator bushing in there and a screw and a nut on one side and a screw and a nut on the other side so when you undo the bottom one it, it there's nothing for you to grab onto so it just sits there and spins so i'm just going to take the, the muffler off from right here and i'll get to that with the motor out how you do that so maybe a little bit next there's four bolts four motor mount bolts come out of this Two, I'm sure, are buried. Okay. We'll get a half inch on top as well. Yep. Okay. Half inch. Sorry for bumping you. Okay. Okay. She's loose, I think. Yep, there's the motors moving. Okay. 
Okay, motor's moving. Sure, you moving. All right, so. Okay, so that is just gonna hang there like that. That's gonna come down. I don't know if you can see this or not. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up, pull this out. All right. See how she goes here. something to set this on so I'm just gonna go like that so the oil doesn't drain to the cylinder head. Figure that out. Zip tie that or something. There you go. She's pulled. So I did notice a couple uh, differences between these motors. This is the old one. You can see the fuel line comes in here and the new one has this vent for the fuel and then there's the fuel line coming in there so the old one was off of a like a tractor style mower and so that had uh, a gravity feed tank and this one the tank is actually i don't know if it's below or about level with the with the engine itself so i'm guessing that one has a fuel pump on it so i'll probably um, have to transfer that over, but uh, I'm definitely going to be swapping over the um, the covers here because this one on the old motor looks like it's got like an extra cage to protect from grass and stuff coming in versus this one just has the open, which makes sense because this engine is just out in the open on the zero turn and that one in the tractor is underneath the hood. So I'll swap those out. Uh, and then take a look at that uh, fuel pump situation. Well, it's probably a good thing I was going to swap those out anyway, because look at that mouse got in here. And definitely, I just want to make sure there's no mice in here. But, uh, yeah, it chewed that wire up. I don't know what wire that is. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, and it looks like, this vent hose goes down to the air box, I think. And then I still haven't even had a chance. Yeah, there's the fuel pump. So I'll have to swap that out. Okay, so I got the air box off. And yeah, as I suspected, the old one's got a fuel pump, the new one does not. So you can kind of see here, here's the, the inlet goes to the fuel pump that's driven off a of pulse from the crankcase and you can kind of see through the mess it goes right down to the inlet on the carburetor versus this one from the tractor this is just a vent from the fuel tank it just hooks to the air box as you can see this is the the inlet there for the fuel and so um not a huge deal uh looks like that has a bracket on it and should be able to stick it in there, that little provision. And then the hardest part about this is just going to be drilling and tapping that hole for the the pulse line for the for the crankcase to run this fuel pump. So this old engine actually had a cracked block when I got it, and that's what I thought the oil leak was from. There's actually like a fracture on the crankcase straight down here. You can see, obviously, cleaned it up. Um, what happened was there's a dowel right here. It's like a dowel pin that goes in there. It holds this top part of the, the cover for the crankcase on the actual crankcase. And I think that dowel came out. And what happened is these bolts here and right here, I think, yes, this one and these two sheared off in there from the force. And so then like this whole, the cylinder basically was like flexing whenever it would run. And that, that crap just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so then what I did is I went through 
and got new bolts. You can see that's a new one. And I think I got a couple more in here too. But basically, uh, I took the bolts like from around here. Yeah, see these new ones back here. And so I used the factory bolts here because these ones aren't, they were too long. And these are not through holes. And these ones I took are, are through holes. And so I used the factory bolts here, put a new pin in there and siliconed it in so it couldn't come out. And then I just cleaned this real good and siliconed it real good. And I do see there is a little bit of oil coming through there, but not nearly as much. But you can see it's dry underneath here. So that's not where the oil is coming from, even though it was just pouring out of there when I got this motor. So I, when I bought this mower, I knew this, this motor had, uh, its days were numbered. But uh, that worked out really good, the fix on that. So if you are working on these Kohler motors, um, that's just something to look for is uh, this, this plate could come come loose and that that pin could be sheared off so just something to look for all right so here's what we're working with a one eighth inch npt tap if you can see that and then this drill bit is eight and a half millimeters so it should work out pretty good i've this is my tapping setup for eighth inch npt so what we're gonna do is gonna drill this hole and then tap it so it's always kind of a kind of a scary thing drilling into a motor, but um, you know, just do it. So I'm marking my hole here. Yeah. By the way, if you're these things are nice. I don't know where you get them or what they're called, but it's just like a spring-loaded thing, and you put it in there, and it gives you like a little starting spot for your for your drill bit. And then what we'll do is add the secret ingredient. That would be grease. See how the, the chips stick right to it? It'll be the same thing when it pops through there, all the chips should stick right to that grease. Okay, so what I want to do now is get the vacuum out. There. Just to keep those shavings from going in there. see them in there see it didn't um, poke all the way through I tried to go real slow but sometimes that happens but uh, yeah we'll just get down there in the drill bit and break them loose all right so I forgot to film it but um, went ahead and did that cleaned it out put some grease on there and you can see it those little bits pulled right out there's a bit there so there's like one in there that I can see and that shaving should stick to um, the drill bit. So I, I highly doubt you're going to be able to see this, but oh, maybe you can, but there's a little dot in there. You can kind of see it right on the tip there. Um, yep. Right, right there. That's the, that's the little piece that was in there. So, um, yeah, that worked out great. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tap this. Um, what I'm doing, get that in there. I have to use a, a, a socket extension and a vice grip to get past this flywheel because my um, tap handle just doesn't quite reach, but uh, this works just fine. So I'll put downward pressure, get her going. So that grease works twofold, you know, it. it it lubricates it and it keeps the the shavings, the tap shavings nice and collected on it. So yeah, I'll just 
and tap, tap, tap away, tap, 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 room. Just going nice and slow. So yeah, you can kind of see um, some did get on the bottom of that. I'll check it again, but the majority of it stayed right in the, the flutes of that tap. So I'll just check and make sure that we didn't drop any down in there. All right, so that's in there. All I gotta do now is just swap over the, the fuel pump and the lines and um, we should be good to go on the fuel pump swap. All right, so there must be some type of diaphragm or something in there, but you can hear that. It's not leaking, so should be good to go on that. So another difference you'll see is this little provision here. That was for this vent line. And so I want to plug that because that goes, it's, this is where the carburetor mounts. Um, this was the bracket. I just swapped it over. There's just like a screw that you screw in from the backside. Um, other than that, I got the, the fuel pump on there, swapped her all over. Um, so we'll just, it should be all that we need to do for that. So easy peasy. All right, I got the air box all switched over, the vent for the crankcase. These are bolted on. Um, one difference I did notice, so I got this bracket and the fuel pump mounted. This block has this standoff here between the flywheel and the fuel line. And I'm almost certain that's what that's for, is to block this fuel line. Because on this one, the old one, it doesn't have that. And it just has this afterthought thing but uh this right here is the reason why you never throw away rags until they're absolutely filthy because you use use them for just a little bit to wipe your hands or whatever maybe you get a little bit of grease on them you know one like that like don't throw that away throw that in the corner somewhere in a bag or something and then it's like perfect for cleaning up stuff like this um same thing with like if you're changing your oil and you drop some on the floor of your garage like go to the dirty rag pile and just use it to soak up the oil or whatever else so that's uh, another pro tip for you All right, here's the other end, the other side to that muffler mount. So it's got like a rubber isolator. What we're going to do, instead of messing with that double-sided thing, we're just going to make our own with a bolt. And then these are just like rubber washers for hose hoses. It's a fender washer. So, I don't know. It'll work. It'll keep it from vibrating. Um, and we don't have to mess with a double-sided thing where it's like, Try to loosen one side, but the other side loosens and you can't hold it and it spins. And yeah, so we'll just do it this way. Um, should work. Just throw this thing in there. I think we're ready to go. Whew. All right. It's not that heavy. Sweet. Okay, I got the clutch and the pulley on there. Um, one thing that I did or didn't do actually is bolt this down before I put that on there. So what I did is I could slide the motor backwards. It just makes getting that pulley, the pulleys and the belts and stuff on there easier. Okay, so we got everything back in this bracket, hold that clutch. Got the wire in there, got all four bolts to the engine. Um, the only thing next is tighten that bolt, throw the muffler on here, and that should be it for underneath here. Now this is very important that you torque that accurately. So we're gonna go ahead and torque that accurately. 
So hopefully I can set my phone there. All right, we're gonna get this. Okay. Perfect. Okay. It's not going anywhere. Yep. All right. I think we, I think we got her. Um, <laughs> what a mess. Okay. So we got the starter wire hooked back up. There's the grounds right there hooked up. That connector hooked up. Fuel line hooked up. Throttle cable hooked up there. I just, there's kind of like a dent on the the casing of that. I just lined it up with that. It seems like it works. Um, see, there's full throttle. It hits the detent on full throttle and then goes to choke. So that seems like it should work. Um, I got the pulleys back on, the belt back on, the tensioner back on, the muffler on. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in there, but uh, use the bolt. Got those the muffler bolts back in there. Um, filled it with oil. That's the number one thing. You got to have oil. So um, yeah, we'll see how she goes. I don't know what else, but um, we'll just do it live. Yeah, well, unscripted. I have not tried this, so we'll see. See how it goes. I don't know. Just give her one more. Look once over, look for any extra bolts or anything laying around that should be in there. Um, all right, Let's see what she does. Seems like it's burning a little oil, probably from setting that was rocking it back and forth and moving it around and stuff. Um, but yeah, it seems like it runs, so we'll take it, uh, start her back up and bring up the throttle and see if the blades engage. Must be something with uh, with PTO clutch, maybe with the wiring, or here. Let's try this, huh? Look at this disaster. Let's get her cleaned up a little bit and test it out. Set you guys right there. Okay, so this is the first start up the next day, so hopefully everything. Uh,
thanks for watching. Um, that went pretty well. Uh, one of the things that I did, didn't mention is the, so the mower that I got that off of, I paid $200 and 25 bucks for the guy to deliver it. And I ended up selling the, the chassis of the mower for 250 bucks. So I've got, I made $25 by doing this, by swapping that motor. Um, so it worked out pretty good. The motor seems like it runs really good. The swap was relatively easy, a couple hours here and there, probably a grand total of maybe three hours, four hours is what I have into it. Um, probably would have been a little bit less if I didn't have to uh, retap that fuel pulse line spot, uh, but uh, no big deal. But uh, if you like this, let me know. I think I'm going to try to do more of these videos. I'm going to try to do more videos in general. So if you got something that you want to see, just let me know. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Thanks. Okay, check this out. I don't know if you can see this or not. Or hear it. But it's about 8.30 at night. And that is a moth. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that or not. He's still ripping around here. We've had these guys hanging out the last couple of nights. And they're... I don't know, hummingbird moths or something like that. But it's a moth, and it's just like a hummingbird. So I don't know where he went, but pretty cool. They just uh, hang out in the flowers and rip around. Uh, there was three of them out here last night. Oh, and a big old toad. Big guy, holy smokes. Monster. Look at that, full of bugs. Wildlife city. Jesus. What else we got out here? Snakes, turtles, rabbits, frogs, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, thought that was cool.